Hey everybody, I'm Rob Freeman and welcome back to Ensuring the Built Environment. This week we're talking about the world of digital property rights and digital assets. And I think this is an important video because more and more of the world economy is being invested in the intangible. Specifically, people are investing more and more in cryptocurrencies. Millions and millions of Americans own cryptocurrencies today. And more and more people are buying non-fungible tokens uh, or NFTs. And uh, when you spend real money on an NFT, probably the next question in your mind is, well, how do I protect it? And is there a way to get insurance on an NFT? Can I insure an NFT? And uh, on, on the face of it, it would seem that it should be possible to insure an NFT because it's a unique thing. I mean, what makes an NFT possible is the blockchain technology underneath it, which is a decentralized database, a public database that has a record of every transaction that's happened on the blockchain. It's publicly verifiable and you can see uh, where the links from the NFT point. So you can find the digital media file that is stored elsewhere and verify the ownership of it through a hash. You can just, uh, you can reverse engineer that and find out whether the hash matches and actually below the video, as it's a complex topic, below the video I go into some detail on the component parts of an NFT and how you would think about insuring it. But for this video, let's just talk about why the NFTs and um, digital assets don't really fit into the world of commercial property policies because some companies are actually investing in NFTs today. And so they may be thinking, well, how do I insure it? So. The short answer is that the way that commercial property insurance is written today is it doesn't contemplate in the insurance of an intangible object. So in a commercial property policy, you have uh, what's called covered property. And then the, the trigger for a property loss is based on direct physical loss or damage to covered property. And covered property is really three things. It's uh, buildings, it's business personal property, or it's personal property of others. So buildings, uh, business personal property, or BPP, or personal property of others. And if you have invested in an NFT, it's obviously not gonna be part of the building, and it might be considered business personal property. Uh, and I guess if you're a, an exchange or you are providing custody services for others for third parties of the NFT, then it could be considered uh, personal property of others. The problem is that uh, the uh, property policy is triggered by direct physical loss or damage, and the key word there is physical. So even though the IRS, can t I think the IRS and the SEC categorize cryptocurrencies as property, there is no physical aspect to them. And so that becomes a problem when trying to uh, file a claim for a damaged NFT. And so again, below the video, I go into more detail in the article here uh, that describes all the aspects of what is covered property and um, you know how you would think about insuring an NFT. Um, but the other thing to think about here, if you are th considering buying an NFT is that the NFT is different or separated from the actual asset, whether it's digital or physical, from the NFT itself. So the NFT itself is a unique digital token that lives on a blockchain and references the artwork or the um, physical object that is the thing that you actually see. And a lot of people don't really know about that. They don't think about it. It's just they think about an NFT being as being a, sing, a single thing when it's actually two different things. So at some point, I think what's going to happen is that you will have some sort of a hybrid insurance policy that's a combination of property insurance, uh, maybe what they call a specie insurance, which is designed around to insure high value items. It's a type of property insurance for high value items and also maybe a type of cyber insurance. Because when you take the two important component parts of an NFT, which is the NFT itself, which lives on the blockchain, and then the other thing, which is the files that are stored, sometimes decentralized, sometimes in a centralized way, separate from the NFT, they're linked by a series of links or one link, 
uh, that references those files on the blockchain. But there's two different things. So if the blockchain is doing what it's doing, meaning it's, uh, it's immutable, it's uh, decentralized, it is resilient, it can't be destroyed, then you really shouldn't have to insure the NFT on the blockchain if the blockchain is truly doing what it says it is, being uh, decentralized and uh, you know, no central point of failure for that blockchain. If it's aged, if it has a lot of resilience and, and uh, is secured by a strong uh, consensus mechanism like proof of work or a proof of stake or even a proof of transfer, which is a new sort of consensus mechanism for the Stacks protocol. But if it has that, you shouldn't really necessarily need to insure the NFT itself. Now, it turns out that you probably might want to insure the media file or at least uh, protect yourself by downloading multiple copies of it, storing them in separate places or using making sure that you're using a decentralized file system like IPFS or SIA or Arweave or one of these other uh, decentralized file storage systems and not stored in a centralized place like uh, AWS or Google Cloud or something like that. So um, below the video, again, I go into more detail in the article for sort of NFT risk management. And if you can't get NFT insurance, at least you can be smart about how uh, to protect your investment in the NFT. And um, anyway, I think this is a fascinating, fascinating market. And uh, it's a really kind of a cool time to uh, be in this industry because of what's happening with the incredible shift away from, or maybe just in addition to the physical world into the digital world and how uh, digital property rights are becoming more and more important as a part of everybody's either investment portfolio or just their lives in general and what they refer to and where they keep records and where they keep their assets and other investments. So uh, anyway, if you find this, uh, if you find this, uh, this video helpful, um, please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, if you have questions about uh, insurance, please feel free to schedule an appointment with me at the link below. Thanks again and have a great day.